Hey, what's up, everybody? Pastor Seth here. Hey, what's up, Pastor Seth? It's Pam here. What's up, Pam? Hey, so glad to be with you guys today. Happy Sunday <laughs> happy to Sunday. you. Or if you're watching this on a Monday, happy Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday or Thursday or Friday. Whatever day you're watching <laughs> it, happy that day to you. Uh, but if you are joining us here at 9 a.m. If uh, it's Sunday. Sunday. Hey, we, we get to be here. And there. And at 10 a.m. We're at live 10. today in person um, Hopefully you're at not watching Thompson this Town Park at 181 Park. Town Park Road, Monticello. Come join us. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be awesome. So good to be in person. Listen, if you go to Walmart, you're going to the mall, you're going to Home Depot or whatever you may be going, you can go to the church. Charging. Not a guilt trip, just the God honest truth. Come on. Love to see you be part of it. And yeah, um, join us. Oh. It's, so, it's so good. Okay. Bible says you were to twenty-five. Don't forsake the assembly of yourself together. But I will be preaching later. That's just a free tidbit for you today. Hey, guess what day it is? Sunday. Oh well, yeah, we said that. Oh, but it's also less than six weeks of Christmas. We'll see. Forty-one days. Uh, that's what I thought you were talking about when you said if you've been to Walmart or Target. Because guess what you see when you go to those places. Well, Walmart they've had Christmas stuff up since August, yeah, so Christmas it's hard time. to judge that. But um, hey. I can't blame mom on that. I love myself some Christmas. Uh, what about you? So how many of you right now truthfully gonna say, hey, I got my tree up already. Come on, give us a tree emoji. We wanna hear from you. How many got your tree up? All right, how many of you are like your team pre-Thanksgiving? You already got Christmas stuff up. Come on, if you decorate pre-Thanksgiving, uh, uh, let us know. Or how many of you are team post-Thanksgiving? Like Thanksgiving's gonna happen first and then, you know, like, you know, Santa Claus, stay in your lane. You know, we gotta do, you know, Thanksgiving first. If that's you, if you're team post Thanksgiving, drop that in the comments. See, I, well, for me, if it was in a perfect world, I would have Christmas, uh, all Christmas stuff after Thanksgiving. But because of our schedules, I kind of have to decorate for a little me, bit before. For me, perfect world. Be Christmas every single stinking day. Never I, put down the tree and the decorations. Plus, listen. I'll be home for Christmas. Okay. Miss Jones. Miss is every day. See, like Joan, she likes real trees. Like I like real trees. Is it real or is so it? So we can't put a real tree up the beginning of November and then you know uh, it'd be beautiful by January. Yes, you could. So I do put all my faux fake artificial stuff. What up, if? What if? And then what we if get our real a Christmas tree. Potted Christmas there. tree, a tree in a pot. Oh yeah. Then you can have it all the time. Yeah, you and can. you're helping your environment. That's true. All right. I you, know a lot of people do that. Yeah. So you should. You should do that. So, you should feel bad yeah. if you don't do that. Cutting down defenseless Christmas trees. I don't cut them down. Actually, we don't. We have something to do it for us. We have something to do it for us. Yes, yes. Local <laughs> farmer, by the way. Yeah, we just pick Good it stuff. And then if they you need to know a place locally to go, we will hook you up. Beautiful place. Don't go to Home Depot. No offense if you were at Home Depot. Those trees are like weeks, weeks old by the time. We know you get it fresh and awesome and so good. Needles don't fall over the ground. No, um, and they're always beautiful. And they're always beautiful. Well, I mean, I don't know if they're beautiful like Easter because I don't keep it up till Easter, but. Again. If you want your tree to last sure. till Easter, then get yourself a photo. So, come on now. Are you team pre-Thanksgiving? Pre, uh, pre you already decorating? Are you team post-Thanksgiving? Yeah, right. Some people are like, hey, again, you already went to Thanksgiving and you got to recognize. Listen, I recognize Thanksgiving. Just understand that like November 1st up to, uh, you know, Thanksgiving, it's Christmas. And then Thanksgiving, you know, it's Thanksgiving Day. But I also like to call it thankful for Christmas Day. And then after Thanksgiving, it's Christmas, Christmas season, season again. Gotcha. Yeah, so it's, uh, you know, and then we got Christmas music jamming all the time. Like, come on, yeah, it's yeah. good stuff. Sometimes we do. Hey, I mean, not like super all the time. Speaking about jamming. Jamming. We got stuff some jamming here at Restoration. Oh, yeah. uh, hey, if you're not getting our weekly emails, which by the way, some two or three emails lately a week, it's not like you pass or I never know anything's nice. going on. Well, here you go. Text That's the word research, R E Church 84576. Yep. Uh, get our text messaging emails. And if you're not getting emails, check your spam or your promotions folder if you're on Google or whatever. And um, hey, we got a lot of say. So, yeah, anyway, um, and we love again, be with you live today here at 10 a.m. Um, at 181 Town Park, Rome. And so at that's coming up. Operation Christmas Child, by the oh, way, yes. boxes are due. So if you haven't brought them in, bring them in this week. Uh, reach out to me if you need a range and drop them off at the house, whatever. We've got to have them in this week. Uh, planning to drop them off Friday. Okay, so gotcha. need to get them from you guys like ASAP. That means like ASAP, like let's go. All right, so guys, thank you for joining us today. Uh, just as we worship together. Come on all my pre-Thanksgiving Christmas decoration people, party on, let's go. All right, God bless you guys. Bye, have guys. a great service. Boom, peace, Christmas. Yeah, go.
everyone, this is Janie, and I want to welcome you here online at Restoration Church. We exist to lead people to become fully engaged followers of Jesus. And if you are joining us for the first time, we are honored that you are with us. We would love to connect with you at rechurch.tv slash connect. We also want to thank you for your continued generosity here at Restoration, where we live to give. The easiest way you can give is by going to rechurch.tv slash give or text give to 845-209-1313. To get more information on how you can take the next steps here at Restoration, simply visit us at rechurch.tv. Thanks again for tuning in, and we hope this message today will be the peace and encouragement you need. There is a battle coming. The war has already begun. It has raged unseen for millennia, and though we often struggle to see the conflict for what it really is, all of us can feel its effects. We wrestle with the powers of sin and death on a daily basis, and sometimes, in our darkest moments, it can feel like we're losing. But the word of the Lord tells a different story. Hope echoes throughout the pages of Scripture. Despite the mystery that surrounds it, the book of Revelation offers the people of God a clear message. Fear not tomorrow. Tomorrow is one. Hey, what's up, everyone? Pastor Seth here. Thank you again so much for joining us here, Read Church Online. And we're just honored to be with you today. And uh, we are continuing our message series on the book of Revelation. And today we're talking about your end time. So hold on. Um, it's about to get real today. And I've got some fire to be preaching to you about what the Word of God says about uh, what's going to be happening for us uh, here on this earth and for our destination for eternity. And so it's real good. And so, in fact, if you got a moment to share this right now on your Facebook page, uh, maybe there's someone uh, in your feed that needs to see this and hear this message today. Hope it brings encouragement to you. I challenge you as well. And I'm saying that God is at work no matter the circumstances that are, we are facing today. And so let's make sure we make God a priority this morning as we come to Him. And we're going to start off with the reading of God's Word. And today we're, we are reading from Revelation chapter 19, verse 1 and 2. After this, I heard what sounded like the roar of a great multitude in heaven shouting, Hallelujah! Salvation and glory and power belong to our God, for true and just are His judgments. He has condemned the great prostitute who corrupted the earth by her adulteries. He has avenged on her the blood of his servants. All right, so if you are just joining with us, maybe first time, uh, maybe you're trying to catch up, you haven't read this part of Revelation yet, you're like, whoa, what is this all about? You know, did you actually just say, <laughs> did they just use the word prostitute? And yes, and so there's this analogy being used it's the symbolism that's, that's really strong and, and it's to catch our attention, all right? And, and so hopefully it has a day. And so what we just read from Revelation chapter 19, and you can read it in Revelation 18, uh, there's this, uh, this idea of this uh, harlot, a prostitute, whatever translation you're reading from is introduced. It's the idea of, of seducing the world, seducing us, seducing people. All right, and, and trying to again turn us away from 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 God Himself, and so uh, you have to understand that, that there's this presence of the, the spirit of the Antichrist is alive and well today, and and so we have these forces at play, the spiritual warfare that's trying to lure us in, trying to entice us away from Jesus Himself, and so this is a reminder: you're not neutral in any of this. You're not neutral, okay? You've got, there's a war that's raging and you've got to choose what side are you on? What side are you on? You've got to take a stand. You, you can't, there's no Switzerland in this, right? You've got to pick a side. 
All right, and so this 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 prostitute, this 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 picture here is being introduced. It, it's alluring, it's seductive, tempting. Okay, it's it's this idea of comfort. It's hey, this is the way to happiness. Uh, this is the best the way to the best life is possible. Okay, so it's enticing. It sounds good, you know. And in fact, it actually kind of feels a little good. It might even feel a little bit right. Um, and, and so it's really this idea of enticing men from the worship of God. All right, it's it's kind of like a bait and switch type uh, type ploy that's coming out of the scheme of bait and switch. You know, offering ease, offering comfort, pleasure, reign and rule. Um, and here's the deal: if we take the bait, it will turn out that uh, it will turn on us and devour us. Okay, and so so that but this is what the world does. This is what Satan throws. The enemy's throwing at our way today. The easy way out. The Bible talks about that. He says, you know, broad is a, a you know is a path that leads to destruction. Narrow, it, 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 you know, is a, is a way that that leads to righteousness. That leads to, to the kingdom of God. And it's a road less taken. And so so Satan is going to come and it's the seduction. And this and, and this luring and this tempting. Hey, come this way. It's okay. Everyone's doing it. Don't worry about what you know. Don't don't get stuck in the old stuff. That that Bible doesn't apply to you today. It's it's an ancient text writings. You know and you know and it's and so we hear this and we're like hmm. You know, is that true? No, that's the enemy putting out and spilling these lies out from us. Again, the enemy's on a sinking ship. He knows it. He's trying everything he can to take us with him. And so we, we've got to choose the side. We're in a fight. Okay? We're in a fight today. There, there's no neutral parties in this. And, and I want to encourage you and challenge you that living a life of holiness is a fight. Living a life of holiness is a fight. To live a, a life, a holy life, it is a fight. Now listen, uh, God is holy, and because of the Son Jesus, we were made righteous because of Jesus, all right? And so therefore, um, you know, there's holiness in God. But here on earth, as we, you know, living our, our, in our sinful nature and, and still dealing with the temptation of this world, we have to fight for holiness. We have to fight for holiness. And so... I want to challenge you with this. And so we, we were introduced in Revelation 18. If you haven't had a chance to read it, I encourage you to do so. Okay, the seductive, this this prostitute coming in and, and enticing us, enticing in us to follow the world and, and, and to turn our backs on Jesus, to turn our backs on God. And here in Revelation chapter 19, verse 3 and 4, we see the end of, of this taking place. And it says, again, they shouted, hallelujah. This is the smoke from her goes up forever and ever. This is 24 elders and four living creatures fell down and worshiped God who was seated on the throne. And they cried, Amen, hallelujah, and 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 this celebration took place. All right, so 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 this this process, this 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 ideology was taken uh, care of once and for all. And and I want you to know, listen, the decisions that we make today impacts our, our future, impacts our tomorrow. All right, the, the decisions that you make today can impact your eternity. Okay, and so we've got to be able to again, what side are we on? There's no, we're, there's we can't be neutral in this. Um, you know, people are saying, is this? Are we living in end times? Let, I don't know. I can't 100 percent say you know when Jesus is coming back, but I cannot tell you. I, I I'm I'm praying and believing that He can come back any day, any moment. All right, and so 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 yes, this could be the end times for us. Who knows? But we're called to live our lives daily that God can come back any moment. You know, and so so we need to be living this way, understanding the decisions that you make today. Okay, can impact your tomorrow. In fact, it could impact those around you. And so, so we got to be intentional and, and, and prior to prioritize God in all things we do. Listen, we talked about this last week. If, if you feel like God has kind of abandoned you and kind of, and kind of has left you out, you know, on your own, listen, it's not God, you know, who's distant himself from us. It's us who have distanced ourselves from God. So we need to put ourselves within his presence, okay? Um, so, so we see this, the celebration taking place, and, and, and so here, decisions uh, that we make today is going to impact our tomorrow. And there's going to be a judgment that's coming. And this is what I want to talk about today. There's going to be a judgment that's coming, all right? And so, so we're being trying to be enticed to follow the world, follow the enemy, turn our backs on Jesus. And yet, we can't sit up before God and say, well, it's not my fault, you know, this person tempted me. No, we still have to make a, a count, help, be held accountable for our actions. And so we're going to talk about this today. In Revelation chapter 22, verse 12 and 13. 
It says, Behold, I am coming soon. Okay, my reward is with me, and I'll give to everyone according to what he has done. Okay, so we're going to be held accountable for what we've done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. All right, so Jesus speaking and says, listen, I'm going to, there's going to be this judgment, okay, standing before the throne of Jesus, right? And, 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 and say, I am the Alpha and the Omega, I'm the beginning and the end. Everyone's going to be held up for, and be accountable for their, their actions, all right, according to what they have done. So you got to understand, listen, living a life of holiness is a fight. We've got to make the decisions today and prioritize God first in our life. Stop making excuses. Stop justifying it. Stop saying, well, I'll do that thing tomorrow, right? But for now, I need to do this. No, if God's called you to do something, be obedient in that today. Remember, delayed obedience is still disobedience. Okay, so so we need to intentionally make these decisions. And, and so what's going to happen at the judgment? You know, uh, really, just think of this, your life being played out on the screen. You know, God knows our innermost thoughts. He knows our actions. He he, t- he has a record of it all, right? And so so just think about this. And so we will be standing one day um, at the judgment seat of Christ. Each one of us individually are going to be standing, you know, at the judgment seat of Christ. All right. So, so, so you are going to be held accountable for your personally for your actions before God. And so, so we have to understand this is, this, this should kind of, you know, kind of shake us a little bit today and, and put some reality of, Ooh, I'm going to have to be held accountable for that. Think about the times that, you know, as you're growing up maybe and, you know, and you got in trouble, you know, at home and you're just being to your parents or you got in trouble at school and you're held, you got called to the principal's office, right? I'm sure none of you ever got called to the principal's office, but maybe you heard your friend, right, was their principal office and what happened? They go sit before the principal and the principal say, hey, did you do this, this, and this? I heard this, this, and this. Or today everyone records everything. Hey, I have on video, yo, that you did this, right? We're still held accountable for actions. And now with that, there's consequences. So to, we, it's no different. We're going to be and before God and, and, and God's going to look and he's going to hold us accountable for our actions. And, and so, so we will stand at the judgment seat of Christ. Luke chapter 14, verse 14 says this. Although they cannot repay you, you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteousness. Okay, and so, so, so understanding this, that, that, that when this comes and when we stand before the throne, okay, what our actions and there's consequences and, 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 and actually blessings too on, on the other side of, of what we've been doing for God. And if we have given our life to Jesus, then, you know, then we spend eternity in the presence of God, you know, and if we're faithful and, and just doing what God's called us to do, it talks about the, the rewards and, and, you know, the idea of being able to, to receive those things. Okay, so it, it's standing before God, it should be shaped us and like putting in reality, but it's also something we should be looking forward to if you are living your life the way God's called you to live your life. All right. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 10 says, for we all must appear before the judgment seat of Christ. You know, it says that each one of you may receive what is due for the things done while in the body, whether good or bad. So, so once again, you know, held accountable for our actions, good or bad, right? We're going to, you know, we're, as we sit and stand before the judgment seat of Christ, um, we're going to be receiving things that are due to us. So again, the decisions that we make today impacts our tomorrow, impacts our eternity. All right, so we need to be intentional in our actions. What are we choosing? How are we choosing to live our life? How are you leading family? Are you spending daily time with God? Are you, are you serving faithfully? Are you giving away you've been called to give? Are you serving the way you're supposed to be served? Are you using the talents, the abilities, the resources God's given you for the kingdom of God, for his glory? How's your attitude? Do you need an attitude check today? You know, how's your relationship with God? Again, do you feel distance? Do you feel far from God? Then, then what are you doing to get back in, 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 in fellowship with Him? Uh, you need to run to the Father today. Let me tell you that. You need to run to Him and just just just, just lay it out before Him. Maybe there's some confession of your sin in your, in your life. You know, again, we're going to be held accountable for everything we do. Maybe you're here and you're watching and you've never received Jesus as your personal Savior. You're trying to figure out this God thing. Can I tell you, there's hope. You know, that, you know. yes, we are all sinful. We've, we've all made bad, in bad decisions. We've all done stuff that we regret. But the good news is that Jesus died for us and his blood has been shed. He sacrificed his life for us. Therefore, if we receive Christ for our life, we have been forgiven completely. And so when we stand before God and God looks at the good and the bad, it's not a matter of, okay, you did more bad than good, so you're done. Or you did more good than bad, then, you know, then, okay, you made it in. It's not a matter of good deeds. It's a matter of, you know, have you given your life to Jesus? Have you accepted his forgiveness? 
Because that's the only true way we can enter into the presence of God, who's a holy God, without sin, is to be completely forgiven of all our sins, right? So this is the accountability, standing for, for, before the judgment seat of Christ. And so it's going to be, again, something should be shaking you, put some reality, having you ask some questions like, am I in a right relationship with God today? Is he a priority in my life? Is there some area of my life that I need to give to him? There's some dark areas that I need to bring to the light. Now, these are questions we should be asking. And then let's talk about this idea of if, if, when we receive Christ in life. Then the reward, the ultimate reward, is we get to glorify God forever. We spend eternity with Him. You know, we get to go, go to a place called heaven. And so the, one of the big questions I get as a pastor is, so what's heaven like? What's heaven like? Well, let me try to explain to you a little bit. The, the scriptures are actually very, very uh, uh, minimal in the details it gives us. But let me just share a little bit, you know, because we think, I think our, our view, view is, uh, you know, some say, well, heaven's going to be boring. You know, there's not going to be nothing to do. Uh, maybe some of you think you're going to be a bald, naked baby just playing an angel. I, or, you know, playing harps, you know, with the angels. I don't know. All right. Um, I, you know, where you're thinking. But the scriptures kind of give some details. All right. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be incredible. It's going to just be this, this is like 24-7 praise and worship. And it's going to be so good because it's going to be without sin. There's no regrets. There's no guilt. There's no more tears. There's no more sorrow. There's no more, you know, like, it's just going to be amazing. And so what happened to me? Like, well, uh, first is God will establish a new heaven and a new earth. Okay, so it's going to be fresh. It's going to be new. It's going to be incredible. God will establish a new heaven and a new earth. And Revelation 21 verse 1 says, Then I saw a new heaven. And a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. So God said, I've gotten to prepare a place for you, right? You know, it's going to be amazing, right? It's, it's a new heaven and a new earth. It's, it, 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 again, all sin, all decay, all suffering is it, out of the picture. And, and we have perfect bodies. We have, you know, we, we're in the presence of God. You know, there's no more death, right? There's, there's no more pain. There's, there's no more sickness. And it's just going to be amazing. You know, and, and so we, we could kind of like in our own minds, because what our picture here on earth, what we think heaven's going to be is, is limited because we very, we're very materialistic. Just come on. You know, most of us are, 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 are concerned about what's, what's my mansion going to look like? You know, are we wearing clothes? Are we wearing clothes like this? Are we wearing a robe? Are, is there going to be stores? You know, is my dog going to be with me in heaven? You know, is my cat going to be in heaven? Let me answer that. Dogs, yes. Cats, not sure. All right. But you know what I'm saying? Like, um, but we, those are all things that concern for us here on earth. I honestly don't think it's going to really concern us that much when we're in the presence of Jesus. But because God is a good God and, and Jesus did what he did for us, there's going to be things that we enjoy on this earth that I think God's going to, to, to allow us to experience up there, but in a perfect way. All right, so it's going to be incredible. So God's going to establish a new heaven and a new earth. And here's a cool thing I mentioned already, is that we are going to never suffer again. We will never suffer again. Revelation chapter 21, verses 4 and 5 says, He will wipe again every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the old uh, order of things have passed away. And he who was seated at the throne said, I am making everything new. Making everything new. Listen, again, pain, fear, worry, stress, hunger, you know, sickness, heartache, loneliness, war, famine, uh, genocide, hurricanes, earthquakes, all going to be wiped away. All right? All, all, we will never suffer again. We, when God stops in a new heaven, a new earth, we will never suffer again. And here is the main thing. You will live God forever. You will live with God forever. Revelation 21 verse 3, And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Now the dwelling of God is with men, and he will live with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. Listen, we're going to be able to live with God forever and be in his presence and just be able to just worship and glorify him. It's, it's going to be amazing to be in the presence of your creator, in the presence of your savior, in the presence of, of our redeemer, the, the one who gives us hope, the one who showed us mercy and extended his grace. 
It's going to be amazing. We're going to be reunited with loved ones, those that, that have passed on before us, you know, those who, you know, have given their lives to Jesus. And, you know, those that you know, maybe, you know, I, I'm speaking personal experience. Uh, you know, my wife and I, we, we lost our, our son. You know, he was stillborn. We never able to really we experience him here on this earth. But one day we're going to be reunited with him in heaven. Like, it's going to be an amazing place. And God has it for you. And so I challenge you today. You want to be in the presence of God. You want to be reunited with those who have given their lives to Jesus. Then you need to give your life to Jesus as well. And if, if you're a Christian, you need to check yourself. Make sure that we are doing everything we can. Because the decisions that we make today does impact our future. does impact our tomorrow. And it can be impacting those around us. Your kids are watching you, mom and dad. They're watching your example. So come on, lead faithfully. Your neighbors, your co-workers, they, 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 you're on the radar. If you're a follower of Jesus, you're on somebody's radar and they're watching you they're watching you how you react and how you act they're act, they're watching the decisions and they're, they're listening to the words that you speak and listen I, it's, I know I'm not trying to throw all this pressure on you we're not going to be perfect in our walk here on earth but we need to be checking ourselves on a regular basis to make sure that we're doing whatever we can to represent who Jesus is and what he's done for us and those around us all right so you know we we've, we've got to really evaluate this because the real, the prostitute that is kind of trying to lure us, to tempt us, you know, the bait and switch, getting us, enticing us, so we, you know, so we fail to worship the true God, doing everything we can, you know, to to, to and, and, and to to keep us at, at bay, you know, keep us out of the fight. Kevin, you're not neutral in this. You're not. Okay, living the life of holiness is, is, a, is a daily battle, putting on the spiritual warfare, being ready and prepared to fight. Okay, stop laying back and just, you know, let's bring the fight to the enemy. Let's let's cause some trouble within the streets, cause some trouble in our neighborhood. You know, make the enemy cause so uncomfortable because you're doing what God's called you to do. You're praying, you know, and you're becoming a prayer warrior. You're doing prayer walks up and down your community. You know, you're you're praying over your family. You're praying with your spouse. You know, you're 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 leading. A Bible study, you know, and you're you're you know just you're you're just doing what God's called you to do. Let's go, all right? Because one day we're going to live in the presence of God forever. So let's make this life here on earth count. Okay, let's make it count. Every single minute counts, okay? You know, let's redeem the time. Let's reuse the opportunities that God gives us. We don't want to stand before the judgment seat of Christ one day and be regretful, you know, as God plays back and the missed opportunities, the missed times that we could have led faithfully, the missed times that we could have served someone, the missed times that we could have, you know, loved on, 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 on someone around us, you know, because we're too caught up in our own lives, too caught up in our own world to see what God has placed around us. One day we're going to be facing the great white throne judgment. Revelation chapter 20, verse 11 and 12, then it says, Then I saw a great white throne, and him who was seated on it. Earth and sky uh, fled from his presence, and there was no place for them. And I saw the dead, great and small, standing before the throne, and books were open. Another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged uh, according to what they had done, as recorded in the books. In verse 15, if anyone's name was not found written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. He was thrown into the lake of fire. So we talked about what will heaven be like. But let me just mention that if you're not in heaven in the presence of God for eternity, then the Bible talks about being cast into the lake of fire, cast to a place called hell. And I know it becomes a joke you know, like, well, all my friends are going to be there. It's just going to be a great old time. And, you know, or some saying, well, the life we're living now, this is hell. You know, you know, that's what the Bible No, There's a literal place that we're going to be spending eternity. It's either heaven or hell. Okay. In the presence of God or in, in the absence of the presence of God, the absence of anything good. And so, so we need to make sure our name is in the book. And as we're standing before the great right throne of judgment, they're going to be looking down and seeing where we are, you know, and, 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 and checking, did you receive Christ as your personal Savior? Is your name written in the book of life? Come on, right now you can know for sure that your name's in the book of life by simply calling out to Jesus saying, God, forgive me, come into my life today. I, I want to receive you in my life. I, I want you to become the savior, the leader, uh, you know, of my life. I'm giving it all to you. I'm humbling myself before you. 
I'm going to ask, I'm going to believe, I'm going to confess and receive you in my life today. Come on. Do you know for sure where you would go today if today was your last day here on earth? Do you know for sure? I do. I'm 100% confident that I'll be in the presence of God. I'm 100% confident by the scriptures. 100% confident of the decision I made, not because of what I've done, because of what Jesus has done for me. And can I tell you what? He's done it for you to do. He's done it for you today as well. You simply have to accept and believe and receive Christ within your life. Listen, sometimes we don't get what we deserve because our God is that good. Sometimes we don't get what we deserve. For all of sin, all of us fall short of the glory of God, the penalty and consequence of our sin is death. But we don't have to face that consequence. We simply give our life to Jesus today. God is that good. His grace is sufficient for you and for me. Do you believe it? Have you received it? Come on. In times, maybe it's today, maybe it's tomorrow. Maybe it's 20, 50 years, 100 years, 200 years. I don't know. What I do know is this. is the time that you and I have here on this earth is temporary. It is short. So let's live every day to the fullness. Live for, for, for what God's call us to do. Just be obedient. So one day when we stand before the judgment seat, God can look at you and say, Hey, well done, my good and faithful servant. Well done, good and faithful servant. Let's pray today. God, thank you for all you do for us. Thank you for your love for us. I pray we honor you and glorify you in everything we do and say. Lord, just I lift up those who are watching today in prayer. If there's anyone here that's watching and does not know you as a personal Savior, they call out you today, receive you in their lives, Lord. And that one day when they stand before you, your, their name is found in the book of life. And he goes, well done, a good and faithful servant. Thank you for being a good God. God sends his, his, sends his grace and mercy to us today. We love you in your name. Amen. Hey, guys, thanks again for joining us today. And um, if there's anything that we can be doing for you, please just don't, you know, please feel free to reach out. And um, hey, if you uh, are wanting to know more how to have a personal relationship with Jesus, um, or maybe you made a decision for Jesus today, let us know. Uh, let us help you and I'd love to walk alongside your journey. Go to rechurch.tv slash online. Again, it's rechurch.tv slash online. And uh, there's different links there. Um, and there's one on, on how, you know, on steps of following Jesus and what that looks like. And Contact us. Let us know. We'll get you a Bible in your hands. We'll sit down with you. We'll just we'll go over everything with you, you know, um, and just 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 do life together. All right. God bless you guys. Have a great week. Looking forward to hanging out with you real soon. All right. God bless. And hey, remember, we do not need to fear tomorrow because tomorrow is one. Thank you for joining us today. If you are new with us or you said yes to Jesus today. Connect with us at rechurch.tv slash online. Let us know how we can pray for you at rechurch.tv slash prayer. And thank you for your continued generosity. We give out of the overflow of our heart. Giving is an act of worship that expresses our gratitude, faith, and love for others. You can give by text and give to 845-209-1313 or online at rechurch.tv slash give. To keep updated on what's happening here at Restoration, text RECHURCH to 84576 or visit us at rechurch.tv.